So, 6 8. Graphing radical functions. Pay attention. Yo, we're live on YouTube. Okay, you guys. <laughs> no, I'm ever one of my expectations. Respectful people talking. That includes myself. So, be respectful. Um, so, what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to graph square roots and other radical functions today. So, now remember, square roots are the inverse functions of squares. We use them to undo each other, yes? Yes. Cube roots, we undo cubes. They're inverses of each other, so their graphs are going to look like inverses. Even powers, however, there's some catches with them. We got some problems with even powers. Odd powers, no problem. Um, so here's, here's the big problem with even powers. If we looked at the graph um, y equals x squared, we know what that looks like, right? Yes. Where's the vertex of that baby? Zero, zero. Goes one, one. It goes two, up two. Four. Four. And then it's the same back here because the axis of symmetry helps us out. So there's our parent function of a, of a quadratic. Now, we know that this is a function because it passes the... Passes the vertical line test. But here's the problem. If I was to graph the inverse of this, it would look like this. I'm going to freak out, aren't I? Freak out on me. You didn't hear anything. But if I graphed the, the inverse, what would happen right here? This isn't a function, because what does it fail on the inverse? And one way you can tell before having to graph it is if the original function fails the horizontal line test, we know the inverse will not be a function. The horizontal line test. The horizontal line test tells us Tells us whether the inverse is a function. So that's the whole point of the vertical line, of the horizontal line test. The vertical line te test tells us if we have a function to start with, and the horizontal line test tells us if is the inverse going to be a function. Now, here's the problem though: we take the square root of things all the time, but graphically we have a problem with that. So we have a way to get through that. You and I will have a conversation later. Um, we're going to limit and restrict the domain in order to graph the inverse. Okay? So, because as it is right now, I can't graph the inverse because it, it's going to fail the horizontal line test. So how we get about around that is um, if we look at the parent function again, but we're only going to look at half of it. We're going to say we're only looking when x is greater than 0. So we're only looking right here. So now when we graph the inverse, mm, it's going to look like this. Now we can actually talk about it because now we're talking about an inverse that is a function. So we're going to have a key concept, which is going to talk to us once again about graphical transformations. So this is like the third time we've talked about graphical transformations. So we're going to do them again. No big deal. It's going to happen. So let's bring some memories back. So key concepts.
families of radical functions. So what we're going to look at, so first thing we're going to do is parent functions. We got two different types that we're looking at here, okay? We're going to look at square roots specifically because we actually talk about them a lot. And then we're going to say, okay, well, how does this extend to other radical functions? So the parent function of this looks like the square root of x. The parent function of this is the nth root of whatever x is. So in other words, we don't know what the nth root is. Um, one thing I do want to note is when n is even, the domain is restricted of x to the n. So of the inverse function, when n is even, you have to restrict the domain because otherwise you cannot graph an inverse function. And that's just kind of how we get around it. So there's a parent function. And now we're going to go through the graphical transformations of said functions. The first one is reflection in the x-axis. So to do that, we slam a negative in the front. The negative in the front is a reflection across the x-axis. It has nothing to do with the number that might be behind it. The negative is a reflection across the x-axis. Then you deal with the number itself. So there's the reflection. We're also going to talk about stretches or shrinks. And that's the value that's, uh, if you put a number out there. And if A is greater than 1, it's a stretch. And if A is between 0 and 1, it's a shrink. Why didn't I include the negatives with the less than 1? Because what's the negative do? It's the reflection. The negative is dealt with in the reflection, and then all you got to do is worry about the number. Is that okay? And the last group we're going to talk about are translations. These are the lefts, right, ups, and downs. Um, horizontal is with the H. Vertical is with the K. Another note about the horizontal, it's the opposite of what you think. So that looks like y equals the square root of x minus h on the inside plus the k on the outside. Okay? Whenever it's all done on the inside with the x, it's a horizontal. If it's done outside, it's a vertical. Right? And the same thing with the um, radical. It's just going to have an nth root right here. There's our k. We have talked about these before, yes? Yes. So they're coming back through. You'll talk about them again in your next math class, probably. So... Um, you guys might want to grab some graph paper. Okay, I'm going to put graph paper out again, but please don't use it as line paper if you don't have any. We're running out of graph paper because you guys like seem to eat this for lunch or something. So, come grab a piece of graph paper and use it for the graphing. So, please, or can everyone just come back? Oh,
So, parent function, square root of x. So, what's the smallest x value we get to pick? Zero. So, the parent function always starts at zero, zero. What if I put a one in? What's the square root of one? One. One. What's the square root of four? And then you can keep going. It just it looks like half of a sideways parabola is what it looks like. Is that okay? So that's the parent function. Is that why you need plus or minus for it to be like a full parabola? Yeah, because you would need this bottom part here. But then it makes it not a function. So we're going to ask and see what happens here. So what's that minus 2 on the outside do? Uh, Moves it down two. down two. Good. So do we need to even make a table, or can we just drop our points down two? So that's what that one looks like. And then what about this one? Moves it up one. So take your original parent function and move it up one. Are we okay with the vertical translations? Yes, ma'am. Alrighty. So in your next graph down, so that was example one. So here we're going to do example two. So example two, so let's re, um, let's replot that. So our parent function, so where do we start? Zero, 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 zero one, 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 four, two. So what we're going to graph. This one. Okay, so it's on the inside. So what is it? Horizontal plus it's horizontal, and it's always the backwards of what you think. So we're going to go down. minus horizontal. So go backwards. One, two, three, four. So when it's on the inside, it's horizontal, left or right. And backwards of what you think. What about the square root of x minus 1? Uh, move to the right one. Move to the right one, yep. And these two are going to look like they blend together, but they really are different. It's just there's some little movement after a while. They look like they bleed together. All right, you guys are good at that. Okay, we're gonna do problem three. Is this 
funny. Okay, so we got a lot going on. We're going to throw it all together, okay? So what's the negative do? Uh, reflect those down. Reflect x-axis. What's the one-half do? Uh, cuts the shrink y values in half. Good. I like the y values. Vertical shrink of a half. What's the minus 3 on the inside do? Move it right 3. Right 3. And the 1? Up 1. Up 1. Okay. So let's graph the parent function, and then we're just going to start moving this baby all over the place. Now, if we could do these two at the same time, that would be awesome. Okay. Reflect and shrink it. We can do that. So let's graph the parent function. So 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 4, 2. So that's the parent function. So now, the negative, we're going to reflect it, and we need to shrink our y values by a half. So instead of being down here at negative 1, it's going to be at negative one half. a half. And instead of being at negative 2, it's going to be at negative one. 1. So now we're right here. And now we're going to take those points. And can I go to the right 3 and up 1 at the same time? Yes, so instead of being at 0, we're going to go to the right 3 up 1. Instead of being at 1 and a negative a half, it's going to be right 3. 1, 2, 3, up 1. 1, 2, 3, up 1. So there's our final. Do you guys feel like we've done this, something like this before? Yeah. Yes, we're just using a different function. The rules are the same. Oh, yeah. The, the part with parentheses instead of Mm-hmm. Before we had squares and stuff, and we moved parabolas all over the place. Now we're just doing it with a radical. Okay, so this next one, let's do this. Um, it's, a multi it's a solving um, a word problem. So here we go. Ready? So this is example four. It says you can model the population of Corpus Christi, Texas between the years 1970 and 2005 by using this radical uh, function. Oh, good. Uh, no, not on this one. Where X is in years. So the question is, using the model, in what year will the population be to be a quarter of a million dollars? 250,000. So what are we going to do with this 250,000? Not for X. X is in years. You're going to put it in for right here. We want to know when it equals. We're going to put it in for population depending on years. And we're going to solve. Now, we could do this in our calculators, but I know we are smart enough to actually do this by hand, and that's more fun anyway. What are we going to do first? Five by 75,000. Look, it's already more fun. How many times does 75 go into 250? Like three and a half. Three and a third? Three and a third. Three and a third. So three and a third is the same thing as 10 thirds? Why am I keeping it as a fraction? Because it's easier. You're it's, a repeating decimal. it's a repeating decimal. It's going to be easier to cube it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you okay? Yes, Three and a third, same thing as ten thirds. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are we going to get rid of the cube root? Cube both sides. So a thousand over twenty-seven, and they are going to they ask for the approximate year, so we are going to convert this to a decimal. And then what's the last step going to be? 1950. So 1,000 over 27 plus 1950. 
So in about 1987, population of Corp Corpus Christi was a quarter of a million. What do you think? That's kind of cool. Kind of cool? Yeah. We don't need no calculator for that. Whatever. We got that. Let's see you do it. <laughs> don't even start with me. Don't start with the math magician. Don't start with the math magician. I'm sorry, I missed math. Mathematical. There we go. Math Let's figure out what this thing looks like, shall we? So let's let's start with a table. You just graph each of the values. I mean, graph eight and two. Oh, negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. It's a cube root, so we can. So negative eight. We want to know the cube root of negative eight. So negative two. What about the cube root of negative one? Zero? Zero. One? One. Cube root of eight? Two. Two. So can we graph that and see what the parent function looks like? Yes. Let's do it. So it kind of looks like the cubic function just laying down, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's the parent function. That's what a cube root looks like. Because now we're going to move it. So now we're going to change it. So what's the two out front do? Vertical stretch by the, with the y values of 2. What's the plus 1 on the inside? Left 1. Left 1. And the minus 4? Down 4. So let's do the vertical stretch first. So we're going to take all of our y values and we're going to multiply it by 2. two. Nice thing is 0, 0 stays the same. <laughs> yes? Mm -hmm. You'd flip it and then multiply by 2. So instead of being here at 1, it's going to go up to, two, two. instead of being at 2, it's going to go to four. 4. So right now we're right here. So this middle part kind of got it got steeper and it looks a little wider right there. You okay there? Yep. And now can we go left 1 and down 4 at the same time? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to go left 1. Down four. Left one. Can you go down four from your original? No, from your the new dash one. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Go left one and then down four. I did that one this one. Oops, burp. One, two, three, four. Oh, I got lost. Oh, right there. That was close. So maybe on my homework, I would highlight the one that I was my done one. <gasps> How fun! There it is.